All right, so this is um, building API endpoints. And the first part is developing a query that'll produce data needed to deliver the endpoint. And usually that's parameter parameterized by a repo ID. And then determining if the endpoint um, will be a standard endpoint or a custom endpoint. Uh, so here's standard and custom. And yeah. Like, can, can you explain it a bit? I like sure will. I, I sure will. So testing the query. Um, going to create some headings here. Leave a code block there. Essentially, I'm just doing this to remind myself how how markdown syntax works. All right. So the um, our endpoints are located under the auger directory in your auger repo. And so where are the endpoints? All right, they're in They're in your dollar auger home slash auger slash metrics. That's the folder that they are in. And inside of there, there are metrics that that um, are organized by the kind of information that they find. So there are metrics for um, commit.py, contributor.py, Three experimental.py, four insight.py, five issue.py, six, oops, six message.py, seven platform.py, eight release.py, and nine. Hmm. repo meta.py all right these these files are not intended to be all inclusive um rather they are what we have developed or imagined based on existing chaos metrics to date. Um, <clears throat> there is also a let me see here. Uh, all right, so these are the existing metrics for um, that return JSON as its product. Um, so we also have existing metrics um, that return visualizations. Visualization metrics files. 
And those are uh, slightly different, obviously. Um, those are in, those are in, let's see, I'll say that JSON metrics are here. Visualization metrics are here. Oops, forgot the code block. And it's not, it's under routes. And we have contributor reports and pull request reports. Existing metrics files for JSON metrics are here. For visualizations, they are contributor, contributor reports.py and <clears throat> pull request reports.py. Um, and the fundamental difference is um, between these metrics and others is um, that they deserve to de 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 deliver a visualization. So um, if I was to give you an example of what that means, I'll stop the share here a minute and I'll share a Firefox screen. Oops. Get rid of all the GSOC stuff I was reviewing. Uh, and oops, that one gave me an internal server error. Wah, wah. Yeah, let me. This actually, okay, I don't have one. Let me try to think of an instance that I have running right now. Hmm. Let's see if this one works. No, that one doesn't work. I think I, I'm having a little bit of a pull request reports. I do yumware.osshealth.io. Three API unstable, and then I give it a repo ID. Uh, let me see if I can give it a valid repo ID. give it one that is actually going to be valid. So, second.
Actually, that's going to be VM on there. Got All right, that gave me an internal server error as well. A team, six of those, three, five, we try. Unexpected character, okay. So um, I don't have a working example of that right now. Um, we are actively developing those, but let's see if I can get one to work. I had a bunch of ones that were ready to demo, and then I had a server problem. So oh, well. The main problem is that I was looking at the repo group ID, not the repo ID. <clears throat> and that's giving me an internal server error also. Um, I'll try one more and yep, then I'll just have to figure out what is going wrong with the APIs for those. Um, I know Andrew is working on a better error message. Um, so, and also optimizing those. I did have a bunch that I had that I knew were working, but one of my servers went down. And so I don't have a super good demo for that right now apparently. So <clears throat> but contributor reports.py and pull request reports.py are the ones that deliver um, uh, contributor. So like, this is basically it imports a lot of things, but then it also imports these visualization libraries. Um, and uh, that's Good to know. Um, I will. I will come back. Let me. Um, let me pause. Resume recording. So, visual and AP, the visualization APIs have have uh, different routes. Um, if it's quarters, uh, month, year, the specified new contributor data collection gets all the new contributor data that's a method uh months data collection this is a query um and then this is a method for the server app route of new contributors and if i make this a little smaller and i do review we can wrap text or wrap you can sort of see the whole thing <clears throat> and it basically it delivers uh, a visualization um bar chart and looks like it's um the default is uh now this year minus one with the end date being now like today uh and then it groups by default quarter and required contributions required time return json false um and eventually it um, delivers the API with a visualization. Um, and so that's one of the nice things about API development is that you have these, these files that let you do visualizations um, as, as endpoints. <clears throat> um, so here the API responses directly the graphs and all. Yep. Or like it, it just directly generates a graph, a PNG file that it displays on the page, and um, 
I don't have a like uh, for the new contributor stack bar. Yeah, for some reason, um, I'm, I'm issuing it wrong, so I'm not not getting the endpoint to return right now. Um, but it, yeah, I will have demos of it returning uh, very shortly. Um, and it could be. Um, yeah, well, we'll move on from there. Um, okay. So the commit, the existing metrics are, are in these files. Um, for so the routes directory contains the contributor reports, the pull request reports, and then we do have non-standard metrics, which give essentially licensing information that are used by the licensing pages. So license ID, SPDX boundary, repo ID. Um, and so this is for the risk. That's mostly what our non-standard metrics are. Um, we also have some pull request um, collection status. Um, APIs that are kind of utilities. We don't have a front end for them right now. Um, <clears throat> but it lets you uh, see the status of current data collection in the repository for, for different things, um, for commits, for issues. Uh, and that's that's pretty useful and you can see um, these are also kind of non-standard insofar as they don't take parameters. non -st like collection status would be a good example if you wanted to create a metric that reported aggregate information across an ecosystem or a repository group, because in those cases, unlike most of the metrics here, um, there's not a metric that, that takes a repo ID or a repo group ID as a parameter. Um, so um, these are good. These are good example. Like the issue message, there isn't one for messenger platform yet, but pull request. These repos will return the JSON that you could then build front end information off of um, or reports off of. And as we perfect our visualization API. Um, and I think there's just a deployment issue that I've created um, that needs needs to be addressed um, there. So <clears throat> uh, it could even be, I've done some recent library updates in setup.py and I haven't set Boca to a specific version, so I may be using the wrong version of Boca. Um, I need to make a note of that for myself. So I will play with that uh, later. So API development involves, essentially, if you look at any of these examples, 
under auger, oops, auger metrics, you'll see lots of ways that that they're built and they're built using a pretty standard strategy. So for whenever it's a register metric, a key thing to keep in mind is this is registering a standard metric. Um, and so if we, let's see. Um, Jason, these are called, these are called standard metrics. And so a standard, you know, the, so the parts of a, parts of a standard metric of Python. Be if I had this dollar auger home is probably going to cause problems. So be auger home. Um, so to build this code block Python, all standard standard metrics. Uh, share uh, a declaration and a method signature. So the declaration is, I think this is spaces. register metric and the signature the method signature is oops def i thought i i thought i did word wrap apparently not so this is the mess method signature. All right, so can you still see that okay? Or is that too wide now? No, it's, it's fine. Okay, so that's the method signature. Um, it includes self, which is a reference to the class that it's in, repo group ID, uh, repo ID, which defaults to none, the period, which defaults today, a begin date and an end date that defaults to none. And then, which, uh, um, standard metrics also, generally include default setting in, in um, blocks. So um, in the event parameters are not passed. So If 
if I go back, oops, if I go back here to contributor, um, there's a little bit of a, there's some documentation here, but the default settings are essentially this. So it sets the begin date to the beginning of time and it sets the end date to the end of time if no date window is passed. So um, that yeah and then it um they typically so default setting blocks for date range in the event parameters are not passed so it gives you you know if not begin date it does that and then oops, I don't know why it's being bad to me right now. And then typically the you can get the you can get the metrics for a repo group or a repo. Um, but more and more we just rely on calling a repo. <clears throat> However, so uh, there is also generally a block and a standard metric um, for um, pulling data by a repo ID or a repo group ID. The default is a repo group ID if there's no repo ID passed. And so that looks like this. So Here's an example from contributor if repo ID results else. And I'll, I'll truncate some of this. <clears throat> um, here is an abridged example from the contributors endpoint in contributor.py. So I'll, if repo ID from I'll take out a whole bunch of this. And then this is kind of like and then 
the results are basically to run this period. I don't know why. I don't know if that's the word wrapping. It's making that act so weird. Oh uh, yeah, it is. It was just the word wrapping. Um, and so else, so you can see if repo ID, then it does this query. And then else, if um, this would be the case where it's not a, um, so this is what gets returned. If, if, if the repo ID is specified else, hmm. um, it does it. It does this query and I'll truncate that one as well. Um, and then it turns that returns those results. So that gives you an idea. There is just basically a strategy that we use for writing the query. So, um, and the visualization metrics, um, Um, or not. Um, so um, let's see, all standard metrics include share this definition method signature. Um, it's also the case that all standard metrics generally share a set of imports metrics. Files generally share a set of imports. Um, and so those are at the top.
Um, you can see that one of the imports is our standard metric import. import from the util file, which is located under Auger home, auger routes util.py. So if you want to know what the register metric is actually doing, um, that's that's where you can find it. Um, so does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so essentially this kind of explains like what's there, where they are, um, what kinds of structure they follow. These are the visualization endpoints. Uh, See if uh, tools build So we've built this little piece of documentation to explain it. One thing you can do is uh, go ahead and um, try to see I'm just going to share a, I'm going to share a terminal, I'm making it really big first. So it's readable. So now I'm in my, I'm just going to do a new share. And so now I'm in the directory, um, for doing, for doing this, um, I'm in the wrong source. And so I can do a make, I believe it's make docs display. Yeah, make doc view. So I can do a make docs dash view. See if I screwed anything up in my, there are some things that aren't used. Um, and then development guide. Oh, you know what I didn't do? There is one step if you're writing documentation. Um, so I made this API development and I saved it. And that was under docs source create a metric, but I have to include it in the table of contents. <clears throat> so that includes this 
kind of thing. Uh, so I would do create a metric slash TOC to include that. And then under here, Just leave the under construction piece there and essentially I have uh, this is just going to include API development as its only thing. And then I'll try, oops, let me do a new share. There's always um, some errors in the uh, make development because we have, oops, we have some uh, documentation partially developed that we don't publish just yet. So um, development guide, create a metric, parts of an auger endpoint. And so this is what we were just editing. Um, and you can see how it comes out. It shows existing metrics files, standard metrics, JSON metrics are here, visualization metrics are here, existing metrics, all standard metrics files generally share a set of imports. You can see one is a standard import located here all standard metrics share declaration and, and a method signature. And standard metrics also generally include um, a default setting block, it includes default setting blocks for date range and the event parameters are not passed. So something like this. Oh, also... is it right now you are on terminal so I can see your browser. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Do this all the time. So, all right, going back. So you can see what we built is, if I go back home to Augur, um, under the development guide, I have now a create a metric um, section and parts of an API endpoint. So developing the query that'll produce data needed to deliver the endpoint, usually parameterized by a repo ID, and then determining if the endpoint will be a standard endpoint or a custom endpoint. So where are the endpoints? There's the JSON metric. He, JSON metrics are here. These are metrics that return JSON data. Um, Augur home metrics and visualization metrics are here. Um, the existing JSON metrics are in these files. And these are standard metrics. All the standard metrics generally share this set of imports. And you can see that one of the imports is our standard metric import from the util file which is located um, under auger home, auger routes util.py. Um, all standard metrics also share a declaration and a method signature, as we said, uh, register metric. This is the method signature that they share. And then they also include a default setting block for date range and the event, uh, param event parameters are not passed, basically from the beginning of time to this moment in time. Uh, 1970 being the beginning of time for computers. And here is an example, a truncated example of a block of, of how the queries are written in, um, <clears throat> uh, this is from the contributor.py um, endpoint. So, and then Existing visualization metrics files are contributor reports.py and pull request reports.py. Um, the, the files altogether are not intended to be to be all inclusive. Rather, they're 
what we have developed or imagined based on existing chaos metrics to date. New chaos metrics are likely to result in the inclusion of new files under metrics or routes, depending if they are standard metrics or not. So we generally put standard metrics under the metrics folder and non-standard metrics under the routes folder. Okay. Yeah. Um, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, yeah it did, it did. Like, it did. Yeah, good. Good. So, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how you create a metric. Um, you start, I would say, start with a, um, this is, um, parts of an auger API endpoint. I probably want to create a file called how, how to, you know, steps for creating a metric. So call that metric steps. And then under create a metric, I'd create a new file. Uh, And then metrics dash steps. Oops. How is this? So these are steps to create a metric. Okay. Um, One, what is the chaos metric we want to develop to sometimes there are metrics endpoints that integrate or visualize several metrics, <clears throat> which is true. Um, and and um, so then the question is, um, determine what tables in the auger schema contain the data we need to develop this metric. Uh, and then four is construct a very basic query that does the work of joining those 
tables in a minimal way. Way so we have a baseline query, uh, and then it's refine the query so that it takes the standard inputs for a standard metric. If that's what type it is, alternately look at non-standard metrics as they are defined in <coughs> excuse me um, auger home auger routes or one of the visualization metrics in auger home auger routes contributor.py Routes, pull requests that pie or <clears throat> auger home, auger routes, non standard. Metric stop high. Uh, and then, oops, my want to call this metrics steps. I don't remember if that's what I called it in the table of contents. So I will go back and look. I did call it metric steps. How about that? <clears throat> I also noticed, notice that I put metric steps ahead of API development. Um, steps to create a metric API endpoint is probably what I want to call that. And then I probably want to have a line here. Why didn't that? Oh, I wonder if I pushed shift. I did. I don't know why I pushed shift. Um, and then we can save that. Do our Make docs view again. And now we'll see under the development guide, we have create a metric and it includes parts of an auger endpoint. It did not, I may have to refresh here. I wonder if I didn't save that. Um, I 
might not have saved it. Let's try rebuilding again. That link should have showed up. I think I may not have saved that file. <clears throat> Let's try, try this again. I wonder if I, I wonder if I didn't save the other file. Do I have metrics? Oh, I see. I called the file metrics dash steps, not metric. I, I called it slightly a different name. And so the build didn't pick it up. So I'm just going to do this one more time. I won't bother showing you the construction, but uh, restructured text is OK. Restructured text, I, I didn't, I used um, an S in one in the document but not in the table of contents so steps to create an api endpoint um are, are listed here and i thought i deleted that but maybe i didn't um so what do we want to develop sometimes there are metric endpoints that integrate for visualized metrics um several metrics determine the tables construct a very basic query that uh, does the work of joining those tables in some minimum way so you have a baseline query um, and then refine the query so that it takes standard inputs for a standard metric and then the next page is parts of an auger api endpoint there <clears throat> and existing metrics existing visualization metrics files, steps to create an endpoint. Um, and you, you might, so what we might do next is have a, so under metric steps, we might include First of all, let's get rid of this because that's a repeat from the previous version. Um, how about an example query to get us started on a labor effort and cost endpoint? So if we do that, first thing we're going to want to do is one, what tables? Uh, we can look at the, I can't remember how to do indentation. Um, in RST. RST, RST. You are then, I think there are two editors on your screen. I'm looking at the MD one. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, thank you. So I'm just looking at other examples of indentation and a lot of it just isn't uh, too terribly straightforward. So what tables um, we might use. Uh, a simple cold, there's also a note, but Probably, we always know that repo is going to be part of it. And we always know that repo group is going to be part of it. 
And then the next thing when it comes to labor, if we look at the, if we look at the auger schema, schema, we can see that effort and cost are contained in the repo labor table. So what might our initial query to explore building the endpoint be? And this would be another code block. And here I can actually have a query handy. I think I do. So this is a query that will work. I don't know how it's going to handle the tabs. We'll find out when we build it. And so here's a query that might generate some data that we want. I'm just going to save this and build it to see if I got the syntax right. I'm always questioning my ability to get the RST syntax right because building things in RST is not my normal way of writing documentation. So create a metric steps that actually worked. So this is like a first cut at building that, that query. Um, but what does that query do? Um, well, to find that out, we would go to some kind of query tool. I use Navicat Premium and they connect to a lot of databases. This is that exact query. And if I run it, what I get is for each repository, I get the language, the labor hours, the labor costs. So I've presumed some labor cost in, in the course of, of doing this work. And the labor cost <clears throat> that I have presumed is um, based on, if I look up at my query, $50 an hour. So you can you could parameterize, like if I was going to make this into an endpoint, and somebody should, you could make labor cost a parameter that you put in, and you could also make minimum labor hours a parameter. So I take the average code complexity times the sum of code lines um, plus 20. Um, the average code complexity is seldom zero. So, um, and uh, we don't have that problem, but we want to make sure that uh, basically we don't have a zero value. So the code complexity will ratchet up or down. And we may look at the metric as it's defining chaos and decide that there's different calculations that we want to use, right? This is just the current, um, this, is, this is like my current first cut, right? At a metric, all right? Um, and so over time, because there isn't one for labor cost, uh, in chaos right now. So over time, oops. 
Over time, so like uh, second, so like the third step, <clears throat> the third step would be over time as chaos develops metric for labor investment, the way we calculate hours and cost in this query will adapt to whatever the chaos uh, community determines is an apt formula. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. Um, and then once we, um, then the next, next thing we do is we will fit this metric into one of the different types of metric API endpoints discussed in the next section. So it kind of, it starts with, what do you want to build a metric for? Is there a chaos metric? Um, are you going to integrate several metrics? Then what are the tables involved? And you construct a basic query that joins those tables and then refine it um, so that it takes the standard inputs for a standard metric, if that's what um, people are looking for. And I might say, this step is explained in the next section. <coughs> If that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, obviously, uh, compiling and going through the effort of making an endpoint isn't something that we can do in, in two hours because there's going to be a lot of back and forth and debugging. But this gives you all of the steps that you would require uh, to create that endpoint. Okay. Okay. Does that help, Drew? Yeah, I did. I, I, yeah. And uh, I think it'll help a lot of other people who want to uh, create metrics in the future as well. Um, do you have, I'm going to stop recording right now, just so you can ask whatever questions you might have, and it doesn't have to be recorded.